All right, and welcome. It is finally time again for the Clan Wars number two, and I am super happy for this. I didn't even finish setting up my webcam. There we go. Okay, so as I said, we have Clan War, and I'm super happy for this. This was such a great time last year, and we're back again. And 
the tournament has started. Um, let's have a quick look at the uh, uh, stats while we wait and for the decks. We have to look at the decks as well. So first up, let's look at the teams we have. This year we have let's see, six teams, yeah. 27 long ships led by Rob, Aaron knows the way, led by Yante. No, Aaron knows the way is. Um, I don't remember. Is it Eric? No. Yante. Oh, it is Yante. Who is in the Jade Warriors then? Jade Warriors are. Um, Eric's in the team. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good to have some people that actually. Jinsido. Yeah, that's right. Loyalist Mushrooms is LGB. Two Metal Dog is Arash, and also the best team. Mad Dogs Reloaded is led by Zelo. This time we have uh, Mad Dogs Reloaded versus the Arrow Knows the Way. Arrows up one game, can they take another one to further their lead? Today we have a game between Shalasa of the Dragon Clan versus Tulsa Doom of the Scorpion. So, a bit of uh, trivia about these players Shalasa, a well known dragon and uh, unicorn player. Who has been playing for a long while, very active on the Discord. I think she's a mod, if I'm not right, or she was a mod, can't remember. Um, don't sleep on this player. She did a very, very great run last year. Uh, lost to some bad luck, sorry about that. Uh, I give my thanks to her brother. But she is definitely not a player to sleep on. Uh, and on the other side we have Tulsa Doom, a bit of a newer player, um, but very very active on the Discord, I have been seeing him a lot around, so it's going to be interesting to see what he brings to the table. So again, 1-0 to the arrow before this game against Mad Dogs Reloaded. We can have a quick look at the other brackets, we have 27 long ships having one lead against 2 Mad Dog. We figured we might give them a bit of a head start. They might need that, you know, old Rob. He needs some time to get going. He needs that head start. Um, but yeah, let's have a quick look at the decks while we wait. Uh, can you tell that I'm hyped? <laughs> I'm super hyped for this. It's gonna be so much fun. And there are a lot of games this weekend, so it's gonna be a super fun weekend for, for me at least, and for everyone watching, because you're gonna watch these games. They are great. There are some real bangers in there. But here we go. Tulsa Doom, Angry Scorps, Mad Dogs Edition. So, Secret Air, Cute and Bayushi. Uh, keep in mind, this is Jade Edict. So, um, if there are some weird stuff you're looking at, uh, it's because it's Jade. So, it's Crab Splash with Secret Cash, Fertile Fields, Upholding Authority, Nitrate, and Toshi Rambo. Nitrate and Toshi Rambo. That's interesting. Okay, okay. I assume Nitrate on Stronghold. Very interesting pick there. Hmm. For the Dynasty, we see a very uh, consistent uh, Dynasty, Alba Artist, Bayush Liar, Strong One Drops, they just keep coming. Curse Catcher, really nice choice for Seeker Scorpion. Oil Challenger, Midnight, Midnight Prowler. Okay. Shadow Stalker, Takao. Underhead Samurai, that's the 2 1 with Covert. Light Brighter and Shizuru Miyako. Some very interesting choices here. It's gonna be cool to see how he manages manages to utilize Midnight Prowler. Um, and Miyako. Miyako with only 4 conflict characters. That is interesting. Hmm. Coming, uh, gonna be interesting to see that. We also see two Season of War, Geisha House, and Storehouse. And keep in mind, Rally cards are disabled. Let's just see that they haven't started yet. Yeah. Rally cards are eroded. The rally is not functional in Jade. Uh, but the cards are still very good. On the conflict side, uh, Katana infiltrators too, so some Shinobi shenanigans here. Hatpanish Blade, Court Mask, Shape to Flesh, really cool card. Uh, Curse of Misfortune could be really good in this matchup, depending on 
uh, how Shalasa plays. We'll have a quick look at the, her deck as well. Tetsubu of Blood. This boy is gonna get smacking. Here my skirmisher for that covert. Three Sadak, of course. It's Kirimushi, Assassination. Two Centures, Spreading the Darkness. Two of the Scorpion, Calling in Favors, Forger and Praise to Ibiza. So this is a very aggressive, straightforward, military focused, um, coverting Shinobi Bonanza. It's gonna be very interesting to see. I think this deck can be really fast, really aggressive. <laughs> takes every other card, yeah. There are some really interesting picks here. Midnight Prowler, more usually seen in some rogue mill decks, um, but sure, information is something, and it is a shinobi, so it can hold that infiltrator's tools. So, yeah, that is Tulsa Dooms, Scorpion, Shinobi, Aggro list. And let's have a quick look at the opposition as well. Shalasa's Kill, Fight, Die, Iron Mountain Castle, Keeper of Water. Crab Splash, Dragon, Cycle of Vengeance, Pulling Authority, Resto, Weight of Duty, by Unotangus Light. Let's make a quick guess here. She has Mirmotorite Sugu in the list. Let's scroll down and see. Yep, there he is. Okay. So, very standard here as well. Bushi, a Dragon. Dunchigenia, Swordsmith, Taiko. Interesting. Interesting. Taiko, Keen Warrior. Oh yeah, that's this inserted guy. Need an adapt. Really nice. I love this guy. So much fun. Uh, Stoic Rival. Also really nice. This looks like my deck. Did you copy my deck? Casaway. Also really strong with these. All these good action abilities. Uh, Need an adapt. Stoic Rival. Uh, Yuikimi. Also good. Um, very good to semi tower up. Uh, only two of her, of course, right? So good, a killer, the killer from core. Nice combo with Onotango's Light, probably on a stronghold. Uh, also, nice combo with Kasue. Also, see Yukuni, Cycle of Rebirth, Season of War, and the Favorite Ground Storehouse. So, very classic, stable dragon deck. Really like this. For the conflict side, we have a lot of restricted attachments. Katanas, on it fans, and Diamond's Gunbai, the jewel attachment. We see two Tessens. We see two Hawk Tattoos. Neaton, I really love this. Oh, Neaton is so cool. Um, I think the idea here is to play Neaton and swap it out for Way of the Dragon. Usually you do it to swap out for more expensive attachments. Uh, could also be used to cycle, uh, cycle activated abilities and attachments. Uh, somehow, uh, I don't remember. Uh, Wave to Dragons, of course. Reprieve is the restricted card. We see Tattered Wonders to counter Covert. We also see Perfect Cut to honor. Uh, there are not many ways for the Dragon to honor, and Perfect Cut is a perfect choice to do that. We see Bound Size. We see two court games, more honor. Defend your honor, of course. This is a, is a Bushi Jewel deck. Uh, more Bushi than Jewel, but still. Let go, of course. Might be important in this matchup. Lots of attachments in this Scorpion list. Actually, more attachments in the Scorpion than in the Dragon. Clan War. What is this? We see some really cool decks here. Ceaseless Duty and Fight On and Indomitable Will. So, let's see if the players are ready. They are not ready. Um, Shalas is online, but not haven't opened the game yet. All right, so some predictions. Hmm. Some predictions. Both decks are capable of going really aggressive. Um, of course, uh, Dragon can play one or two two costers early and dump a bunch of attachments on them, find katanas on it fans, and just go to town. Um, but again, the Scorpion deck can do the same. Play one or two, one or two costers, and just cover path and blade through everything. There's also the assassination in this deck that is going to be super important because there are no protection except reprieve, 
and defend your honor and ceaseless duty okay so there, there is some kill protection but it's all uh, it's all in splash uh, no finger jades no yeah that uh, player on assassination is going to be really interesting to see and also again super funny that the scorpion has more attachments than the dragon what is that super crazy uh, so i think it's going to be a, a very quick start very aggressive start uh, both players smacking each other or maybe we can see tulsa being a bit conservative uh trying to poke around these really really dangerous promises restoration balance of course you don't want to hit first turn uh, pulling authority is not great as well and cycle of vengeance has been a really cool card a really stable air choice for a lot of aggressive decks keeping characters in play for longer and keeping their honor total up really cool to see weight of duty is gonna be really powerful here i think um of course, that Dishonor is mitigated by Q and Bayushi, so it helps to maybe ready the characters, but still gonna be a strong province. Um, and of course, by Unotango's Light, is gonna trip up some crazy combos. Alright, it looks like the game is up. And we're getting ready for, did I type it wrong? Password doesn't work. It was the wrong password, I think. This looks like a dag dragon deck you would run. Yeah, definitely. This is a dragon deck for you. My shit together. It's them that are using the password. Or setting the password. Yeah, I also like this uh, this type of dragon deck. It's very... It's kind of mid-rangey, but on the aggressive side. And it's also... It feels very fundamental when you play. Like you're playing core L5R. Not... Alpha War in core, but you know, the core gameplay. Let's see, Clan War. There we go. I'm ready to go when you are. Need more Jade Tetsubo stuff? Yeah, I, I also play Jade Tetsubo in my lists, I think, yeah. But you know, you gotta need those ceaseless duties and reprieves here. The assassination is coming. Alright, we are ready to go. So let's zoom in and get ready for not the first game of Clan War, but my first cast of Clan War. And this is gonna be great. We see Tulsa on the bottom going as first player. Yeah, Neaton. Neaton is such a cool card. Um, especially with Iron Mountain Castle making it free. She has some mulligans, everything. She doesn't want any of that. Tulsa mulliganing too. We're spectating who's not watching the stream. Probably the team players. You shouldn't be watching the stream. You should be supporting your uh, your player in chat. For the rest of you, uh, you will enjoy the stream. Yeah, the uh, final chapter was really nice, very cathartic. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was very, there was a lot of stuff happening, um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it felt like a good end. It must be really tough to write these so fast, but let's get into the game and we see what Tulsa. Vice Proprietor, Shadow Stalker, Curse Catcher, and a Storehouse, and for Shalassa, Stoic Rivals, Doom Shigenia, and I guess a Taiko. So I think we're gonna see Tulsa, yeah, buying Curse Catcher with three. Sure, no assassinations, go ahead. Really nice to turn off those P 
pesky provinces for Shalasa, maybe a doomed and a story travel. Yeah, I, I really recommend you read the the last chapter of the Cherry Blossom Cherry Blossom story. What is the what's the acronym? Cherry Blossom Battle of Cherry Blossom Lake, is that it? Anyways, so we see Curse Catcher with three. Shalasa is taking some time here. Just to remind everybody, we're doing chess clocks with 35 minutes uh, with a five second grace time. Which means that if a player runs out of time on the clock, they will lose the game. We see Agasha Taiko with no fate. That is an interesting play. Protecting province three. I assume that's the province with uh, the face down card. Okay, that's actually an interesting play because that means that Curse Catcher can't use its ability because it can't attack the province with the face down card. That was a mouthful. Snow, that's right. Yeah, Cherry Blossom Snow. We also have Esp in the chat. Shout out to a an old Mad Dogs player. Player. So yeah, the Ashtaka play is quite aggressive, but I also really like it. Protect the provinces. She really wants those provinces to break and use their effects, I think. Um, forcing the Curse Catcher into something worse. And Chalas is taking a lot of time here to decide on the second buy. I think a second buy could be good here. Um, yeah, the Doom Chigenia. Sounds good. And the lists are open, so they can check each other's list while they play, which is a really good strategy. My alt tab macro is is usually really strong in uh, in uh, clan war or in online in general. So see Tulsa using the storehouse five to five, nothing special. But also that Dunchigenya buy means that Curse Catcher is gonna have a province to attack in the other face down province. Um, yeah, as I said, very aggressive start from at least Chalasa buying two fateless characters um, and Tulsa going for a big three fated curse catcher with no assassinations, just making that statement, ha, you can't kill me. Hirmo Skirmisher, ooh, I think we're gonna see a Hirmo Skirmisher is an interesting pick here. Maybe just a poke. Go over to Dumshikenja, but Tulsa is still not winning that conflict. Hmm, interesting choice. I wonder what he's going for. I assume water, but there is the Keeper of Water from Shalasa, so that could make it risky. Um, void is useless. Earth is always good. Fire is not great here. Um, yeah, I think Earth is the only really good choice for Ring here. Or water, if, if uh, Thulsa thinks he can win this. Which is going to be interesting to see. This is going to be a very important conflict right off the bat. And yeah, going for the province with the face down card to enable Curse Catcher. And going with both, okay. Uh, he was running Tessens right, yeah. And there's Restoration of Balance. Let's see if Shalata defends this. Uh, I assume she would because uh, she probably has the upper hand in military, but I'm not sure. Yeah, this, this defense depends a lot on what Shalasa has in hand here. Um, Looks like she's up for the task. And let's see what happens. 
think Bansai is maybe the only card I would use to defend here. Just a pass. I think Tolus is going to be fine with this unless he has a attachment. Oh, he's going to go for uh, Bansai. Sure. Double Bansai. And it's breaking. Let's see if Shalasa does anything to combat this. I think she has to, having defended. Uh, no, just a pass. Okay, so she's going to be completely bowed out. Promise is going to break. It's not going to trigger. Because of the cur ca curse catcher. And Tulsa wins the conflict. And restoration is triggered, but curse catcher says no. And it breaks. Let's see what we discard. No keepers. Keeper is restricted in Jade as well as in Imperial. Yeah, dropping attachments on Zero Fate dudes is indeed sad. Um, see him discard a restoration of uh, a favored ground, a favorable ground, even. And bowing to Doomish again. And do we see a Tessin here? Or is Shalasa just going to accept the first round as it is? It also passes. Shalasa passes! Okay, she can always wait for the last conflict to have a great chance at an opening. Hmm. There's the testing from Tulsa. Ready in Curse Catcher, ready to go in at another province. This time at the province that cannot be cancelled. Because the effect has been used and it's gonna be on a province with a face up card. Because of Tycho. There's the return Tessen. So Shalasa going defensive here. Aggressive defense, one could say. Going Fateless. She has been playing too much Unicorn, maybe. Um, the Unicorn strategies are hard to get over. It's fun buying a lot of dudes, then watching them disappear, just scooping it up, scooping them up, and throwing them in the trash pile. And then just get four new ones and start all over again. The way of the unicorn. Tulsa passes. And we see a pass pass. And here comes the attack. I think, yeah, Earth. It's gonna be good. Can't attack the face down province. Gonna have to go for one of these stoic rivals. I think Tulsa is really happy to find weight of duty here. Um, but I'm not sure Shalasa can afford to let Upholding break here. Uh, we see Cycle of Engines, which I think is the best choice. I mean, the best province for Shalasa for sure. Um, it means that if Tulsa has to break this, he has to spend one card. And it also means that the Agasha Taiko, most likely, will uh, survive with one fate. So this is the worst find for Tulsa for sure. So a bit of a reprieve <laughs> for Shalasa. We're gonna hear a lot of puns on this stream. Get used, get used to it. It's gonna be good. Shalasa just passes, yeah. I mean Tulsa could have a Pathfinder's Blade. But then Shalasa could have let goes because dragons have let go. Um, so let's see what his interaction means. Yeah, Shalasa is probably in favor in every way. Ooh, calling in favors. Yeah, I guess just to have a defense. Yeah, sure, why not? There are a lot of very much stronger attachments to steal than a used Elian Tessen. But uh, I think this is a pretty 
the good choice. What is Chalasa doing now? Playing a Tattooed Wanderer on this. Interesting. So I assume there's a either Reprieve or um, the, the uh, Ceaseless Duty to go with this. Um, this is a very aggressive start here from Chalasa. And there's the court mask. Okay, so Tulsa is going for the break here. Shalasa passes. And there's the Pathfinder's path path Blade. Do we see a let go? I think we need to see a let go here. Because this could be huge for Shalasa. Do we see a let go? No let go! Ooh, this is a great start for Tulsa. Cycle of Vengeance triggers, but it is cancelled by Pathfinder's Blade. And Indomitable Will is discarded. Pretty good discard. Um, and not many great rings here for Shalasa. Could go air to pressure on her a bit. She, since she's really behind on the uh, conquest side. Fire is not great, could honor the curse catcher, but no, you don't do that because there's a court mask on it, which summons. And void is... Uh, void is void. Yeah, it's gonna be void. Go, no, air. Yeah. This is also really rough for Shalasa, so she's going to have to play another card into this conflict to break. And there's also, also, also the risk of the assassination. Could have been drawn here. No defense pass. There's the perfect cut. Sure. That breaks. And oh, she went with air, anyways. Okay, so I think Shalas is gonna go for the bit of an honor pressure here. Tulsa going down to seven, and Shalas is down one break. Um, she's out of a board, unless there's a save, which I assume there's gotta be. Um, no, going for two honor instead. Okay, so she's still in race. Tulsa passes, and Tulsa is going to get the favor, military, I assume, political, okay, yeah, I guess Tulsa's deck is very military focused, which is weird saying for a scorpion deck, so having a bit of extra oomph in the political events could be good, no reprieve, let's see if we see the ceaseless duty, or if Shalasa is gonna save those for later. No, it's gonna go away. Okay. So again, yeah, very aggressive start from Shalasa. Down one break to two. And the curse catcher lives on. A pretty beefy curse catcher. Four five. With the court mask and the double tessence. Discarding the Shadow Stalker, keeping the Vice Proprietor. Sounds like a good idea. Going to be very few characters on Shalasa's board, so bowing them is going to be really strong here. So for Shalasa we see Retsugu, Storehouse, Swordsmith, Favorite Ground is going to be really good here if there's some covert. Looking at that underhanded Samurai. We see Liar, the Samurai, we see Loyal Challenger and the Vice Proprietor. Vice is going to be really nice here. Tulsa is a lover of shinobi. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. It's a, uh, it's very much a shinobi deck, which is cool. It's a very different flavor of scorpion for sure. And the one that I think a lot of players, scorpion players at least, at least have missed uh, during this iteration of uh, Alpha War. We see Bayushi Liar being played with Zero. It's just a 
fire and forget character you play it it has three political and it draws your card i hear that's pretty strong let's do it with three fate going really heavy on that fate now interesting and sword swordsmith with one so shalasa is ready to slow it down a lot here with that three fate Oh yeah, solitary hero. That actually has uh, uh, has uh, that it can't be coverted. That's right. Uh, Liar should have got some fate to keep going at right Zulu. You know, um, dash is a pretty good stat. I think right Zulu is gonna have trouble fighting someone that doesn't really want to fight. Um, he's more of a talking person, this liar. He can talk to talk, but he won't walk to walk because he has a dash in military. And we see, yeah, Tulsa a bit scared of the dishonor, going with a three bid. Um, and Shalasa, sensing that she's a bit behind, has to go for a five. Storehouse and finds a katana from the swordsmith. Hmm. What ring to go for here as Shalasa? There you go, water to bounty liar. Ooh. Is that a choose? Choose, yeah. It's a target. So, a bit rough that Shalasa doesn't have any uh, finger of jades here. And no motion machine. Motion machine is pretty cool. So no pro protection against that vice proprietor, other than on defense with uh, fight on. Yeah, fight on. That was me untapping a character, by the way. Shalas is gonna roll the dice here. And she finds we had secret cash, we had fertile fields, we had night raid, and we had polling authority. Yeah. Yeah, the people who roll dice, they are a special breed. Um, I know a couple of players who do it. Um, Christian, of course, is very notable for always rolling, I think. Uh, I think Frotop does it as well. Anil. Um, and Shalasa. Okay, so we see a final Fertile Fields. The air promises are really nice here for Scorpion. Both giving Tulsa a fate. And drawing a card, or in Secret Cash's case, um, searching the top five. Okay, so we see Shalasa going political void. Uh, pretty decent ring. Trying to go for the long game here. And forcing a scary decision out of Tulsa if Shalasa wins this conflict, because Shalasa can void probably the Curse Catcher. And then duel it with Raitsugu if Raitsugu can, can get bigger than this for Shigenya. Shen rolls as well. Uh, a lot of players like to roll. I personally like to go for the either the gut feeling or target the character in the province. Depending on if it's a bait or not. Hornet fan and a way of the scorpion to return the favor. So that Imperial Favor actually helps helps Tulsa here, really nice. Um, without it, this would be a one conflict for Shalasa. And she passes, yeah, that Favor really worked out nicely here for Tulsa. The game of the small incremental advantages, that's really cool. Classic Alpha Bar, where the small things make the difference. That one skill, that one 
one Imperial favor. Oh, this game is great. It really is a good game. For the most part. Okay, let's see what we see for the return. Just a pass, no cover this time. No sense in using it with the favorable ground on the field. <laughs> yeah, uh, for the most part, I said. Yeah. It's gonna be fire. Fire could be good, honoring the Vice Brighter or dishonoring Right Sugu. Um, not sure what I would go for here. I think honoring the Vice would be nice. Because. Um, Curse Catcher is too big for it, so anyways, and the other characters are too small anyways. So I think honoring what Brighter here could be good. Because I don't think Shalasa can defend this um, at all, basically. The political power of the Scorpion here is too strong. And Kuretsugu is still gonna be up for the challenge. Oh, how would he do it? How would Uji be putting characters into play with that many holdings? Oh, how, oh, how. Yeah, Shalas has a really difficult choice here. She has to have a really strong hand to defend against this. Hmm. She's still deciding whether or not to defend. Defending is risky here. I mean, she has the favorable ground, so... Yeah. I think defending could be a good choice here. Or, of course, she could use it um, later to move in. If the promise breaks, she could move in on, on a Tango's Light and just try to get a huge kill on either the Curse Catcher or the Vice. No, it's gonna be moving in the Agasha Swordsmith instead. Yeah, that's right. I need to make it a habit to hover over the cards uh, so that people who don't know all of the cards can uh, have a quick read on them. I need to make that a habit. Um, so yeah, we see the Swordsmith, of course, a core card. A lot of people know it. So I'm still gonna try to do it as much as possible. I think my webcam is a bit in the way, but it should be fine. Should be able to read most of the card. And yet breaks with little to no resistance. And we do see the firing on Right Sugun. So okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, both options are I think strong. Lowering the power of Red Sugu here could be good. Now, do we see an attack from Shalasa? Does she have the fight on? Or the Hota to, um, to make Red Sugu defend the stronghold as well? Or does she have to pass? Hmm. Yeah. As much as there are incremental advantages, there are incremental disadvantages, and Solsa is slowly gaining the upper hand here, taking breaks and defending promises, not spending too many cards. Um, glad to see. If we see a Retsugu getting kitted up here with maybe a Way of the Dragon as well, it's going to be really hard to uh, get through that Onotango's Light. Right, Suku so just swinging at everyone and just um, destroying the whole board. Who needs Jade Tetsubos when you have Right Suku and Onotango's Light, right? Yeah, and it's also a static ability. Is that the right wording? 
Uh, so it can't be cancelled by stuff like Curse Catcher or Pathfinder's Blade. You need stuff like Return from Shadows or um, the new Scout from Lion, which is called Meticulous Scout. To the Mayushi, when the Curse Catcher. I think we did see Censures, yeah. Censures and Forgery in the Tulsa list, so attacking here and rel relying on a fight on is going to be really risky. Covered, yeah. Covered could happen. We do see three Shape to Flesh in the Tulsa list, but. There are let goes still somewhere in Shalas's deck. So maybe we'll see those. But I think we would as I don't think yeah, I don't think Shalasa has any let goes here actually. Uh, going again on fertile fields with water. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, he's just gonna get bowed. Hmm. Oh yeah, the tools as well. The Shinobi's tool, Infiltrator's tools. So yeah, it gets bowed. Hmm, she also passes. Yeah, she's gonna rely on Hot Tattoo and fight on to get through this. And I don't think there are any let goes in Shalasa's hand. Because then I think she would have defended um, with Retsugu as the curse catcher. Or, yeah. Yeah. And maybe done a political plump of some, some sort. I think she has something at least. We know that he has that she has a fine katana at least. She also passes. Yeah, she's really trying to go for that now. That kind of classic play of for dragon to defend her stronghold, either here with Anotanga's light or with. Sacred Sanctuary out of Monks. Let's see what happens here. This is going to be a very important conflict. Of course, it's a swing for game. Match ball. One of times light. It's a city province. No defense. It doesn't break. Um, Tulsa needs two more skill. And she does have a let go, okay. Let go on the court mask. And judging by the time it took to pass, I assume it also has at least either forgery or censure in hand. And there's the bonsai. So the other pumps Tulsa can have are Fine Katanas, Tetsubo of Blood, or the one off Spreading the Darkness. Of course she has two uh, he has two restricted attachments on here already, but they are still uh, net positives. So the greatest this curse catcher can become is a lot, but she doesn't he doesn't need to because the Scorpion prevail. Um, Shalasa has nothing to oppose this curse catcher, and it is 1 1 in this matchup. Congratulations to Tulsa, and well played to Shalasa. Um, bit of a rough start getting bowed out first turn, first conflict, but uh, uh, she put up a good, good fight. The Ritsugu could have been scary, um, but the Scorpion deck was too aggressive, too fast. Um, Shinobi's in and out, and they're done. Uh, it was a weird game. 
but it was a fun game to watch. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Maddox Reloaded takes a win. Tulsa versus Shalasa, so it's 1-1. One, one. And let's have a quick look at what other games we have today. Later this evening, in about one and a half hours, we have Enrique versus Ido Nobu. So that is going to be Lion versus Unicorn, most likely. I haven't checked the, uh, the clans they're playing, but this is going to be a really cool game. Enrique, a now very strong uh, Lion, has been uh, gaining some popularity, what do you say, some fame during the, uh, the last two years. And of course, Idenobu, uh, famous French or Canadian, French Canadian, I'm not sure. Um, Unicorn, who placed very well in the last World Championships. So that's going to be a really cool game over at Ikoma Tomoya's stream. Don't miss that. Um, but that is it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. And see you on Ikoma's stream. Take care.